The Corvette is 70 years old, and today I'm celebrating with the 70th anniversary edition. It's not the ideal car to drive on a 40 degree day. It's the first cold snap of fall, but this has winter tires because Chevy fit it that way for New England. Plus we have a heated steering wheel, heated seats, and all that heat from the V8 behind me. This car does zero to 60 in under three seconds. But you already know all about the Corvette. You've seen it, you've watched it, you've read about it. But today you're gonna find out what it's like to really live with this car all year. It's always a good time to sell your car with car gurus. Type in a few details, get a cash offer from dealers nationwide, and if you like the price, they'll pick up your car and they pay you. Every Corvette has an open roof, but the power hardtop on the convertible, with these buttresses rising to each seat, feels like a Ferrari F8 Spider, and it's just as fast. <laughs> Zero to 60 is in 2.9 seconds. And it's hard to believe that the base Corvette can do that. This is a light car. With the options that it has and the convertible, a little over 3,600 pounds. That's not much. Think about what electric cars weigh. If you put a battery in here, and Chevy rumored is supposed to be doing it, well, you're gonna be adding at least 1,000 pounds. And I don't care how much power and torque comes out of an EV, the lightness of this car as it is with that 6.2 liter V8, it, all the dynamics are just balanced. And there's lots of other cars with an excess of 600, 700, 800 horsepower. This makes 495, it doesn't even crack 500. It makes me think that it has way more power than that. And that's a testament to all the grip from behind, the weight distribution, the excellent shifts from this eight-speed automatic. And it's not an average automatic. There's no more manual transmission and it's never gonna come back. For a lot of Corvette owners, that might be a deal breaker. And I get it. Anyone that you pass in a Corvette is in the past. You're in the future, they don't exist. I know that flappy paddles are not the same thing as a gearbox, stick. I love stick. I own one, I love to drive them. But the fact of the matter is, this eight-speed automatic is excellent. I didn't like it when it was on the C7. I don't think it shifted quite as quickly. I don't think it reacted as well, just period. So that was the last time I drove a Corvette. Believe it or not, a lot has changed since then. And this automatic just has it. It really does in any of the modes. It works excellent. And this is all just with the paddle shifters. I mean, the response is instantaneous. It really is. It's among the best out there. Great thing about the C8 is that right off the line, you just feel so connected to it. And the sensation of speed through this windshield is such that you think you're going twice as fast as you actually are. And that's the great thing about it because you don't have to be hammering this car at 10 tenths to have a great time. It's just as happy at 50%, even 30%. Because you get the sound, you get the fury, the feel of these competition seats hugging me. It is just, oh, it's just brilliant. Anyone who hasn't driven a C8 really should because you can compare this legitimately with some of the best cars in the world. I had read other reviews, I had watched other reviews, and I was still skeptical, and I love Corvettes, I do. But I was just wondering what the driving experience could really be like. Could it really be that good? <laughs> the answer is yes. The braking feel is also superb. You can change that 
in the settings as well. Just the perfect amount of bite, not soft, plenty of power. You always know where it's engaging, just like the steering. You just move it just this, a little slight. The wheels are immediately going in that direction. Here's another great bonus with a Corvette, the fuel economy. Look at these numbers. You can get in the mid-20s if you're in the tour mode and you're driving conservatively. Pretty amazing. It's not just the gearing, it's not just the aerodynamics. It's the fact that this V8 becomes a V4. It shuts off half the cylinders, even under load. You'd be surprised. And you could detect a slight change. It's a little bit of like a sound, like a, almost like a valve shutting. I'm probably not saying the right engineering term, but the fuel is being cut off. And it's doing so in such a way that without that little sound, you'd really have to be paying close attention. You don't feel it. And it goes on and off. And that goes a long way to helping you save fuel. But if you drive in really any other mode, you're gonna get more like 13 MPG. Essentially what you're getting is a 3.1 liter V4. That's a big enough engine as it is, because it's a 6.2 liter V8, so if you cut away half those cylinders, that's why the Corvette can cruise pretty confidently with half of them shut down. But if you're like many Corvette drivers, you'll want all eight of them. For 2023, if you're lucky, you'll bring home the 70th anniversary edition. The Corvette debuted at New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel in 1953, wearing all white with red seats and red outlines on the wheels. It was a concept car, but everyone wanted one. Only 300 were made that first year, starting at $3,500. Now, about 1.8 million Corvettes later, is this 2023. As tested price, 100,000. The 70th anniversary edition gets you this white. It is not a regular white, it's a tri-coat. Has a really nice sparkle to it. You can either get this color or all black. This one also has some light gray racing stripes, the double design that go all up and down, including on that back spoiler. You'll notice 70th anniversary badges on the front. You'll see it on the side here, even on the door sills, and the red calipers and these gray painted wheels. Yeah, they got a little red outline just like the original 1953 Corvette did on, of course, much smaller wheels, that's for sure, and special center caps. So I was gonna actually show you the engine, but I couldn't figure out how to open this until I read the owner's manual. You have to have a special key sequence on the fob to actually see the engine, and then when you actually try, well, it's covered. The convertible doesn't let you access the engine right away like it does in the coupe, where it has that nice plexiglass cover. So the servicing will be a little bit more difficult than a regular Corvette coupe, but the engine is still the same. It's an LT2, successive improvements over the LT1, but it's still a low cost type of engine. That's how GM can make such big power and all this performance for such little price. Intake, exhaust, all of that stuff is incrementally improved, so you do get gains, but it's not quite as expensive as it would be in other cars. The special touches inside, these red seat belts, the white and black leather seats, all the black suede all over the dash, the wheel, the red stitching. There's still more 70th anniversary logos on the back glass, on this metal speaker cover. And best of all, like every Corvette, there's not a single Chevrolet logo in sight. Cargo space is pretty good for a mid-engine supercar. 13 cubic feet in the front and rear. And the rear can hold golf clubs, of course. Despite how wide the interior is, it actually is a bit cramped. It's pretty snug in here, especially for someone who's over six feet. I am luckily just under that, so I can fit perfectly into these competition bucket seats. But if you have wider shoulders or hips or anything like that, you should not order them because it is very snug. All these buttons take a lot of getting used to, and you can't reach them all from the driver's seat. But best of all, nearly everything you see and touch is unique to the Corvette. It's not shared with anything else GM. The infotainment is the same type of Chevy infotainment you'll see anywhere else, but that's okay. It's small, but it works. All the icons are here, 4G Wi-Fi, all great. The really cool Corvette thing is all the custom driving modes. 
For example, if you're in Z mode or my mode, you can edit them right here on the screen. Braking, engine and shifting, the suspension, steering. Of course, the engine sound. I always like it on the loudest. And here's PTM, Performance Traction Management. There's one, two, three, four, five different settings. I wouldn't recommend using it on the street, but on the track, it's unstoppable. The instrument panel, very simple, all digital, and it is fully customizable. Now you don't get full screen maps or other fancy stuff like that, but the Corvette is here to tell you all the essentials, the transmission temperature, lateral G's, performance, all that good stuff. And you can change what's on these tiles here in any of the driving modes. The 2023 Corvette Stingray starts at $64,500. When you move up to the 3LT, that gets you a lot more and it's just over $80,000. But we're not done yet, because this car with the Z51 Performance Package and the 70th Anniversary Edition Package puts you at $100,335 with destination. Now before you scream bloody murder over $100,000 for a Corvette, remember what this car competes with. It looks and it drives like cars costing two to three times the price. If you've got money, maybe the Corvette isn't your first choice or any choice, but it doesn't matter. If you're in a Porsche, a Mercedes AMG, or any fancy European sports car, you cannot look down at it. I expected a lot out of the C8 Corvette. It's been out for three years. I wasn't able to ever drive one, only sit in the auto shows. But now that I have, and I've taken it on the road, I've driven it on the back roads all over New England, it is super impressive just as a road car, how civil it is, how amazing it looks. And with this mid-engine transformation, that's what it is. It feels like a completely different car, better than any other Corvette, more balanced, more exotic. It just is the all-around excellent package, and it's a uniquely American way to deliver world-class performance. If this sounds like a Chevy ad, I'm sorry, but the Corvette is just that good. Now, we're not going to be reviewing a ton of sports cars now as it's becoming winter, but we'll have new car reviews every week, just as always. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, go to cargoos.com, and we'll see you next time.